Hello great friends, uh, today I gathered the courage to record the last part of work, energy and power. Uh, I may get some time and record force density and pressure part of it, but uh, the remaining parts I will just circle the correct answers. And I will record the videos later on for those who will be doing uh, October, November this year, the videos will be fully ready. For those who will be doing October, November, I will also record uh, uh, yearly, yearly past papers, I'll record it per year, as people have been requesting me to record per year. So I'll again record uh, per year, but me I thought um, assembling questions in the same document, in the same, for the same topic is easier for, it gives a better picture for, it gives a better picture for, um, for learning and understanding concepts. So without wasting time, I think we stopped on page 61, I'm trying to Page 61, page 61, page 61, page 61. We stopped on page 61 or page 60 in, in part 4. I'm trying to look for page 60 in part 4. We stopped in page, on page 60. Okay, I think we stopped here on page 60. So we're going to page 61 in part 5. Today let me change the color. I think I should use, uh, which color should I use? Okay, let me use purple. So from page 61, we are now winding up with the work energy and power. An electric motor, ah, this thickness is very large. Okay, an electric motor is required to provide 120 watts of mechanical output. The efficiency is 80%. Um, what, which row is correct? I think we had answered a similar question. Efficiency is 0 0.8, which is 80%, is equal to the power output divided by the power input. That means the power input is going to be the power output, which is 120, divided by the efficiency, which is 0 0.8. So 120 divided by 0 0.8 gives us 150. So this is 150 watts as the power uh, input. So what was the heat output from the motor? So that is the power loss or the power, um, the power was the heat output from the motor in watts. So the power loss is going to be 150 minus 120, which is giving us uh, 30. So this means our answer is going to be C. When a horizontal force F is applied to a frictionless trolley over a distance S, the kinetic energy of the trolley changes from 4 joules to 8 joules. We have answered a similar question. Uh, in the past, in the early years, many of these questions were repeated so many times. But of course, as Cambridge advances, it is hard to repeat all many questions. However, the same ideas are just edited. So we know that work done is equal to the change in kinetic energy. So this will imply that 8 minus 4 is going to be equal to force times distance. Because work done is force times distance. So the change in kinetic energy is going to be equal to force times distance. So for the first one, I have 8 minus 4 is F times S. If a force of 2F, if a force of 2F is applied to the trolley of a distance of 2 seconds, what will the original kinetic energy of 4 joules become? So um, now the, the final, the new energy is going to be E, I'll call it E. I'll call that energy E when the initial is 4 joules. What will the original kinetic energy of 4 joules become when the force is twice F? So this will be where there is F, I'll put twice F. And where there is S, I'll put twice S. So I'll divide the two equations, so I have E, minus 4 divided by 8 minus 4, that is 4. 2F times 2S becomes 2F times S. Then, sorry, 4F times S. I'm dividing two equations. So divide by the first equation, which is F times S. So this one cancels, which means that E is going to be equal to 4 times 4, which is 16, plus 4, which is 20. So this is going to be B. The kinetic energy of a vehicle of mass 1,000, Kilograms is 4.5 times 10 power 5 joules. It is braked with a total constant braking force of 6,000. What will be this, its stopping distance? So we have the kinetic energy. And so it means the change in kinetic energy is simply going to be equal to the work done. 
is going to be the work done, which is force times distance. We want the stopping distance. So the kinetic energy, um, it is a break. That means the kinetic energy goes to zero. Changes from 4.5 times 10 power 5. If the brakes are applied, the final velocity will become zero. So it goes to zero. We want the stopping uh, distance. So uh, the change in kinetic energy, which will be 4.5 times 10 power 5, will be called the force, which is 6,000 uh, times uh, the distance, which is, which is actually what we want to find, times S. So I'll just divide here. 4.5 exponent 5 divided by 6,000. Uh, this gives us 75. So this is going to give us S as 75. So S is equal to 75 meters. So the breaking distance is going to be 75 meters. Our answer is B. In, in many old style, in many old style filament lamps, as much as 92 joules of energy is emitted as thermal energy for en every 8 joules of energy emitted as light. What is the efficiency of the lamp? What is the efficiency of the lamp as the percentage of electrical energy converted to light energy? So electrical energy is being converted to light energy. So let's find the total input, total input energy. This is going to be as much as 92 joules of energy is emitted as thermal. So this is emitted as thermal and 8 joules is emitted as light. So total energy input is going to be 8 plus 92, which is going to be 100 joules. That is energy input. But we know that efficiency is going to be the energy output, which is 8 joules, divided by the energy input, which is 100 joules, then times 100. So you have 8 times 100 of course, without even calculation, this is 8%. So this is 8%. So the answer is going to be A. A force of 100 newtons is needed to lift the hook of a, a crane at a steady velocity. The crane is then used to lift the, a load of mass, uh, 100 kilograms, at a velocity of 0 0.5 meters per second. How much of the power developed by the motor of the crane is used in lifting the hook and the load? Assume that acceleration of free fall g is equal to 10 meters per second. Okay, so the acceleration is equal to 10 meters per second. We know that power is equal to force times velocity. All we need is the force. So the force we are going to overcome the mass of the, the we are going to overcome the hook and we're also going to overcome uh, the mass, the crane is used to lift the load, so we, we're also going to overcome the, 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 the weight of the load. So the total force is going to be the force needed to lift the crane alone, plus the, the force which is needed to overcome the weight of, of the load, which is going to be mg. So this would be a 1,000 a times g, which is said to be 10 in this case. So I think this one is 11,000 newtons. So it means the power is going to be equal to 11,000 times the velocity, which is 0 0.5. So 11,000 11, times 0 0.5, which is 5,500. So this one is going to be, this one is going to be 5,500 watts which I think is 5.5 kilowatts. So our answer is going to be B. In terms of energy transfer, W and charge, Q, what are the definitions of potential difference and EMF? We know that potential difference is a work done per unit charge. And we know that is energy transferred from electrical to thermal per unit charge, that is V. And EMF is energy transferred from chemical to electrical per unit charge. So that is W over Q, which makes the answer to automatically be A. A box of weight 200 newtons is pushed so that it moves at a steady speed along a ramp through a height of 1.5 meters. The ramp makes an angle of 30 degrees with the, with the ground. The frictional force on the box is 150 newtons while the box is moving. What is the work done by the person? So we want the work done by the person, which is going to be force um, 
times the distance moved through by that uh, by that box. But this person is going to the work done by this. Um, oh, the gain in uh, the work done is supposed to do. We are going to we are going to do work against the friction. And at the same time, we are going to gain gravitational potential energy. But they said at a steady speed, that means at a constant speed. So the resultant force, the resultant force is going to be zero. So the force upwards is going to be called the force downwards. But downwards, we have the component of the weight, and we also have frictional force. So downwards, we have two forces, the component of the weight down the slope and the frictional force. And those two, when we sum them up, we should be equal to the force upwards. So what is um, what is the total force here? So the total force, which I'm talking about, is going to be the component of the weight down the slope, which is going to be, uh, this component is going to be 200 sine, because we have already seen this, down the slope it is uh, the weight sine theta. So it is 200 sine of 30 plus. Uh, remember, there's also friction, which is which is being overcome by the man pushing the box upwards. So this will be plus 150. So that is the total force. So to find work done, work done is going to be force times that distance in the direction of the force. So this is going to be 200 sine of 30, which is just 100 plus 150. That is the force. Then times, uh, we need to find the distance moved. Let's first find this distance. The distance moved is this distance here up the, the slope, which is, uh, I'm going to call it D. D is in the hypotenuse, we have the opposite. So we have that sine of 30 is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. So it means D is 1.5 divided by sine of 30. Sine of 30 is a half, so it means D is going to be 3 meters. So I'll multiply this one by 3 meters. So this is going to be 200 sine 30, that is 100, plus 150, then times 3. So I'll just multiply 250 times 3. 250 times 3, which is 750. So 250 times 3, this is going to be 750 joules. So my answer is going to be D. A rainy drop of mass M is falling vertically through the air with a steady speed V. The rainy drop experiences a retarding force, KV, due to the air, where K is a constant. The acceleration of free fall is G, which expression gives the kinetic energy of the rainy drop. So we already know that kinetic energy EK is equal to a half M V squared. And they said at a steady speed, we, of course, they said it is uh, at is at a steady speed v. So at a steady speed v, the acceleration is zero. So we know at steady speed, at steady speed, steady means constant. At steady speed, which is v, the acceleration is going to be zero. And we also know that the weight, the weight is equal to. Um, so it, if there is no acceleration, the resultant force is zero, which means that the weight is going to be equal to the retarding force or the force. Uh, slowing down the motion of this raindrop. So the weight, W, let me write weight, is going to be equal to the retarding force. So the weight will be equal to the retarding force. Remember the weight is M times G, and the retarding force has been given as K times V. So if I make V the subject, it means V is going to be MG divided by K. So I'll go and substitute into the expression of kinetic energy. So it means that EK is going to be a half times M, where there is V, I'll put there MG over K, but this is squared. When I open this out, it becomes a half M times M squared G squared over K squared, which simplifies down to M cubed g squared divided by 2k squared. So this is going to be our value of kinetic energy. So the answer is going to be, I think this is D. The kinetic energy of a vehicle of mass 1000 kilograms, I think we have answered this question, is 4.5 times 10 power 5. It is stopped by applying a constant force of 6000 uh, newtons. 
what is its stopping distance? We have just mentioned that work done is equal to force times distance, which is the change in kinetic energy. So it means the stopping distance S is going to be the change in kinetic energy, which is 5.5 times 10 power 5, divided by the force, which is 6,000, which gave us 75 meters. So the answer was B. What are units of work? That is joules. Energy, that is joules. Power, that is watts. So joules is the same as newton meters. So we have newton meters, newton meters, and watts. So our answer is automatically C. Power cannot be measured in joules. It is either joules per second or watts. Uh, but work cannot be measured in joules per second. That's why A and B are wrong. Energy cannot be measured in watts. So the answer is C. Which of the following expression defines power? Remember, power is the rate of doing work, work done per unit time. So the answer is going to be C. Force times velocity is just a formula from, uh, which can be derived from the definition work done over time taken. So this cannot be a definition. We can use it to find, to calculate power, but we cannot use force times velocity to define power. Power is the rate at which work is being done. So it is work done over time taken. The weight W hangs from a, to a trolley that runs along a rail. The trolley moves horizontally through a distance P and simultaneously raises the weight through a height Q. Okay, this looks quite different. As a result, the weight moves through a distance R from X to Y. It starts and finishes at rest. So it means it starts at rest and finishes at rest. How much work is done on the weight during this process? So, um, how much work is done on the weight? The weight of a body acts vertically downwards. So that means the work done is simply going to be the gain in gravitational potential energy. Since uh, the force we are considering is in the vertical plane, for uh, work done on the weight, the force is in the vertical because the weight acts vertically downward. So the work done is going to simply be the gain in a gravitational potential energy. So this is going to simply be mg times h. So what is m? mg is going to be the weight. I think they gave us the weight is w. So this is going to be w. Then the height is just q. So our answer is going to be c, w times q. Power is transferred through a machine as shown. What is the efficiency of the machine? So we see the output power, we see the input power. So efficiency is the ratio of the output over the input, power output over power input. So the answer is automatically D. Air in a bicycle pump is forced through a valve at a constant pressure P. In one stroke of the pump, the volume of air in the pump chamber is reduced from V1, from V1 to V2. The volume is reduced from V1 to V2. So the change in volume is going to be uh, V2 minus V1. The volume of air in the pump chamber is reduced from V1 to V2. So change in volume is going to be V1 minus V2. What is the work done on this air in, in one stroke of the pump? Work done due to a gas is going to be pressure times change in volume. So this is pressure into V1 minus V2, which makes the answer to be C. The, to travel at a constant speed, a car engine provides 24 kilowatts of useful power. The driving force on the car is 600 newtons. At what speed does it travel? So uh, we know that power can also be force times velocity by calculation. So we want the speed, which is the power, 24,000 divide by uh, the velocity, I mean the force, which is 600. So you can simply say 24,000 divided by 600, that is 40. So the answer is 40 meters per second. What is the expression used to define power? Power is the rate of doing work, work done per unit time, so the answer is automatically D without a station. The ball is thrown vertically upwards, neglecting air resistance, which statement is correct. It is thrown vertically upwards. So the ball is going vertically upwards. The kinetic energy of the ball is greater at the greatest height. That is not true. 
velocity decreases as the ball goes upwards and kinetic energy depends on velocity the principle of conservation of energy sorry by the principle of conservation of energy total energy of the ball is constant throughout its motion of course this is correct total energy of the ball is because air resistance is negligible the loss in kinetic energy will be called the gain in potential energy. So by principle of conservation of energy, total energy remains constant throughout the motion. By principle of conservation of momentum, the momentum of the ball is constant throughout its motion. This one is not constant because the ball alone is not an isolated motion. The ball is being acted upon by the force due to gravity. So the ball alone is not an isolated, uh, is not an isolated system. So this principle is not obeyed. The potential energy of the ball increases uniformly with the time during the ascent. During the ascent, potential energy of the ball increases uniformly with the time. Potential energy increases uniformly with the time. It does not increase uniformly with the time because the speed decreases. So the change in h is not the same, or the change in h uh, later on will not be the same as the change in h when the speed was greater. So it does not increase uniformly. Car X is traveling at half the speed of car Y. We have also answered this question, so we shall just solve it. So we shall start with car Y. Its, its kinetic energy EK will simply be a half. Its mass is M. Its speed is V, but squared. This is for Y. For X, its kinetic energy will be a half. The mass is the mass of X is twice. So this is twice M. The speed of x is a half of that of y, so this is a half v, that is squared. So this gives us um, a half m. Okay, it is giving me, um, car x has twice the mass. Okay, let this one cancel out. Okay, that one cancel out, so that I remain with a quarter m times v squared. So I just divide the two equations. They said car x has half the kinetic energy of car y. Let's verify. Kinetic energy of E x is going to be a, a quarter m v squared divided by the other one of um, a half m v squared then times E y. So let's cancel out this one. So this one becomes a quarter divided by a half. Two goes up. It becomes 2 over 4, which is 1 over 2 EY. So the kinetic energy of X is half that of Y. So this is correct. A bar of mass 50 kilograms is loaded onto the back of a lorry 1.6 meters high by pushing it up a smooth plank 3.4 meters long. What is the minimum work done? What is the minimum work done? A barrel of mass, 50 kilograms, is loaded onto the back of a lorry, 1.6 meters high, by pushing it up a smooth a plank. By pushing it up a smooth plank. What is the minimum work done? So remember, work done, the work being done here, 